we're going to be starting preparations for departure shortly uh, one of the things we have to do is tidy up the pilot house as you can see there's a ceiling panel down and the captain's sitting over there preparing documentation to send to the marina because when we get to shelter bay we'll be going into the marina uh, we need to get a few things fixed on the boat so captain what say you yeah, well, they've asked for vessel registration, crew list, Zarpe from last port, valid proof of insurance. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, we're already in uh, Panama, so rather than a Zarpe, I'll send them the cruising permit, which which we have. So I'm about to scan them and send them the crew list, the vessels, vessel's documentation, certificate, the um, certificate of insurance, and the um, cruising permit for Kariwa. The other thing I'm also going to send them is the, the proof that we are registered with the Panama Posse. Um, we're number 107 and that gives us a discount at uh, Shelter Bay Marina um, which obviously they need to see proof of. So once I've scanned those documents then um, I'm going to have to put this back up I've been dealing with a leak up here, but it does seem to have dried off now. So I will be putting the panel back. And then once the panel's up, we'll tidy up the pilot house. And then I think the next thing is uh, get that dinghy on board. Good. Cut. We're going to be setting sail in a couple of hours, so... I need to start tidying up um, and putting stuff away. So we went snorkeling yesterday afternoon, so I've got to put all the snorkel gear away. that all the doors are um, latched so that they don't go flying um, or everything's locked in here. I also need to put away the folding chairs that we have in the cockpit that we use to sit on while we're outside using the grill. The next thing I need to do is some food prep because if it's a little bit rough this evening I won't be able to make supper and we want to have something in the fridge that we can just warm up in the microwave. So I'm just going to cook some rice, throw in some vegetables, cut some sausage. Our friend Francis's brother Robert gave us the most delicious smoked sausage from Louisiana that we absolutely loved and we have a little piece left so I'm going to cut the sausage up and put that in with the rice. Now for the good stuff. Smoked sausage from Rabidos. Rabidos. I don't know how you say it. Food for this evening. Because we're going on passage, we need to raise the dinghy onto the front deck. So this involves pulling it along the starboard side. I need to attach the line to the bit in the bow of the boat and this will allow the dinghy to uh, drift back to where the ladder will be. The thing is to attach the uh, ladder to the side of the, the boat and make sure that it is securely in position before anyone descends down to the dinghy. The davit on Kariwa operates by hydraulics, which means starting the wing engine. We have to open the stack by pulling on a line, and then once the stack is open, we're able to start the wing engine and fire up the hydraulics. Sign says uncover stack before starting engine. So the stack's now uncovered, so I can take that off. Put the key in. 
the wing. So now the wing engine is now running. Then over here, put on the hydraulics panel. Move across here and activate the hydraulics in the forward section of the boat using the bow thruster switch and then bring the revs up on the wing engine to about 1800 rpm should be enough to lift the dinghy and go out and drive the uh, the wind the um, davit so now she's lifting the boom Once the hook is plumbed over the top of the dinghy, it's time for Leslie to climb down the ladder. It's always tricky climbing down. The first thing is to obviously ensure that the ladder is secure and you're not going to go flying off from the first step. Then I have to try and get a grip on the dinghy to bring it closer so that I can step down. Once I'm safely in the dinghy, I have to get a hold of the hook which is attached to the crane and attach the lifting wires to the hook. And I have to also obviously be cautious to not trip over anything. Uh, you'll also notice we've attached the dinghy's aft line to the boat. It just helps with bringing it up. And now the trick on the ladder is to step on it squarely because if I step on it from the side, it could become unhooked. and. I could fall in. Hoisting the dinghy is a series of maneuvers by lifting the hook as well as lifting the boom as the uh, dinghy comes up and then swinging it into position. It's also important to keep um, control of the lines because it helps to control the, the sway or the swing of the dinghy. Before swinging the dinghy on board, we have lifted the engine and turned it to starboard to keep the propeller clear when we lower it down. We have to make sure that the dinghy goes down on its railings forward and then we will lift and move it back into position where it locks into place. Now that the dinghy is in position, obviously the bow is uh, a bit higher than the engine section, so you can hear the automatic bilge pump coming on. One of the other reasons for going down to Shelter Bay is to pick up six temperature sensors for our air conditioning, which has stopped working. We resorted to emergencies by buying an outside window unit and fitting it to our master cabin so that we could have a night of comfortable sleeping. It was temporary and a bit of a MacGyverism, but it did the job for yeah, one night. Yeah. We're now going to stow it in the dinghy and sell it to some other cruiser who needs air conditioning. Nice. I've got to get rid of it. I've got to keep it. With our $200 air conditioning unit safely stowed in the dinghy, the Admiral puts the cover on for the journey. So I'm going to move some fuel from uh, fuel tanks into the tank we use as the day tank, which is the starboard aft tank. It's not really a day tank because it holds 300 gallons, but it is the tank that we run all the polished fuel into, so we call it the day tank.
So the first thing we do is uh, switch on the uh, fuel transfer pump. Then I've uh, checked how much fuel we've got in uh, tanks three, four, and five, which are the diesel tanks. They've all got about 200 gallons in them. Plus in the engine room, we've got another 200. So we've got about 800 gallons. Um, so we'll go down in the engine room and do that. Starboard off tank has got 175 gallons in it. And I've estimated we'll use about 80 to 90 gallons on the trip down because we're going to go economic. But even if it's 100, we'll still have enough. But I'm going to put about uh, 50 to uh, 70 gallons in. And we'll move it first from the uh, center tank and then from the forward starboard tank. What you've got going on over here is the transfer manifold from all of the tanks to the pump. And then over here is the return manifold. So coming from the pump to the various, well, not to the engines, but in this case to the off starboard tank. So go ahead and I'll choose the forward tank on the transfer. Unlock it to the pump, and on this here, I'll open the manifold. So now we're going from the tank to the pump, from the pump to the tank. And then we come over here to the switch, and I'll move it to 20, which will be 40 gallons. Two gallons an hour will be 40 gallons. This is the polishing rake hole. And you check that you've got a vacuum here. You can see that it's uh, got suction. And if we come down here, I can see the bubbles moving. So now we've got 240 gallons in the starboard half tank, ready for our uh, trip. I can shut down the valves now. So first I shut down the pump valve to the to the transfer pump then next I shut the starboard mid starboard tank and then next I shut the transfer then we want to make sure we're ready to go so in the return side we've got the main engine the wing and the generator open and we've got the return into the off starboard tank and in the supply or suction side to the generator, to the wing, to the main engine, from the aft starboard. We're ready to roll. Okay, so I've started the uh, engine room fans down on the main panel. Now I'm going to start up the uh, two fans that are in the stack. And then I'm going over to this panel over here and start to switch everything on and flush up the bridge. You may call it a pilot house, but I am still used to calling it a bridge. I activate all the uh, switches on the main panel to make sure that everything is switched on. I don't switch on the navigation lights so the anchor is away. Put on the main engine control and then on with the engine room camera and the monitors. And um, we then start switching on the equipment on top. The first thing that I go to is activating the autopilots and then we move on to the GPS's switch on the two Furuno GPS's and then over to the Furuno black box which drives the two middle panels the, the stacks open so I can remove the cover that protects the main engine and I can start the main engine No pressure, pressure light goes off. Put the windlass on, wing engine, main engine, central air pressure. Hydraulic, uh, the um, generator's off. AIS is on, VHFs are on, GPS's are on, autopilots are on. Now I'll switch on the Microsoft box on this screen. And while I think about it, I'm going to switch off the anchor alarm. From my 
here. New route. I quickly lay off uh, the course to Cologne using the touch screen. This will give me a good indication of the distance and I will zoom in and out as we proceed along the route to make sure that there are no dangers. It's 154 miles to go. The holding was very good, so it was fortunate that we have high pressure wash to wash the mud off as we hauled the anchor up. Okay, I'm just coming down to check that the boarding gates are closed. This one's closed, and I know this one isn't. So I'm just going to close. And um, this is too heavy to lift with one hand, so I'm going to close it off camera. Also, I'm going to close the side door because experience tells me that it always gets wet through here. So, is that door closed? We're on our way now, and in front of you, you can see Isla Cristobal. We're going to go to port and go through a narrow channel there on our way out. There's our buddy boat, Nordhaven N57, Laura Jane. They are having a problem with the display for their stabilizers, so they're just kind of drifting at the moment trying to fix it. It turned out that it was just a loose connection. As we were coming out of Bocas del Toro, uh, the swell picked up quite a lot because of the, all the water coming in between uh, Isla Caranera and Isla Bastimentos. Behind us you can see that 1057 Laura Jane is pitching in the uh, swell and her uh, bulbous bow comes out of the water. Anyway, the uh, ride settled down as we went on. With the sun setting behind us you can see that conditions have improved considerably. You can only just see our buddy boat Laura Jane in the background and we had just seen dolphins. We caught our first blackfin tuna, which was great excitement for us. And it was pretty tasty as well. Conditions were beautiful. And here are the shots of the dolphins from the bar. Our night passages are generally in four hour shifts and a mixture of keeping an eye on the radar and the chart as well as the equipment to make sure that everything is operational. Leslie had a little friend. This moth kept flying onto the, white, the light of the screen. He was in fact a beautiful blue and yellow in color. As dawn broke, we had a mixture of rain and uh, wonderful oranges as we approached the um, coast of Cologne. On the radar, you could see that there was an increasing number of ships showing up with the anchorage at Cologne starting to appear. In fact, I counted over 50 ships anchored waiting for transit through the canal. So we're on approach to uh, Cologne, Christabel. Uh, the Admiral Leslie has uh, got the lines out of the port locker. And she's uh, just getting the uh, bow line ready. Starboard side two. We always go starboard side two because we only have a walkway on the uh, starboard side. As we approach Cologne, we pass through the anchorage and the ships waiting to transit the canal. There were bulk carriers, handy sized bulk carriers tankers, LPG carriers, one or two container ships, all waiting for their chance to pass through the canal. The lack of rainwater 
has meant that the Gatton Lake is at a, an all-time low, which means they have restricted the number of transits and also reduced the draft of the ships that can go through by two meters. This is slowing up the vessel transits between the Atlantic and the Pacific. So this is the breakwater at the entrance to the Panama Canal. We're just arriving, we're coming in through the inlet here. Almost there, Shots Bay Marina, straight ahead. Coming in there are some Panamanian naval vessels, the 100 ton lift, the paint shed, and then as you swing round to port, you see the marina. Navigation is in deep water, but very close to the mangroves. Okay, we're all tied up in Shelter Bay Marina. Uh, no incidents on incoming, except they kept changing which dock we're gonna be on. But they gave us a tea head so we didn't have to back in or maneuver or anything very easy with the drone you're able to see the position of the uh, marina and the naval base next to it and then you swing across the Cologne bay over to the uh, port of Cologne, and as you swing around you see the breakwater for the entrance and as you come further around, you see all of the vessels out at anchor that we passed through earlier. And for breakfast, after our overnight passage, we're having homemade bread. Got a bit burnt in the oven, I don't know why. And um, mimosas. Prosecco and... Every good passage deserves a mimosa.